When I was a kid, I was horrible at math. It wasn't because of my teacher. I had the best math teacher ever, Mr. Toledo at Castle Roble Fundamental High School. Go Rams! Uh, <laughs> but I didn't have the same experience with a science teacher. This one science guy one time said, uh, science and math just don't work well in women's brain. I mean, seriously, what a jerk, right? I, I mean, I can't tell you how many train wrecks I caused because I couldn't calculate when they were going to hit because of them leaving at the station or I don't know, whatever nonsense. And I don't just mean emotional train wrecks because we all were emotional train wrecks in high school. Years ago, the movie Hidden Figures was up for several awards and Laura and I sat down to watch it. If you haven't seen the movie, it's about these three black women who were an integral part of the space program back in the 60s to help with the astronauts that were going into space and getting them back. So when there was this one scene where this woman is up on this huge chalkboard and doing figures and things like that. I had no idea about these women. So after the movie, which if you haven't seen, I would suggest, Laura and I talked about the fact that, you know, we know who John Glenn is, we know who Buzz Aldrin is, and some of these other folks. We don't know anything about these women that were so integral to the space program. And that got me thinking about how do I start something where I tell stories about women in history. And so that's how I came up with Food and Films. So today I'm going to tell the story of Mary Jacks. What do we have for lunch? Tang. Why are we having Tang? Well, let me show you why. With the success of the recent Apollo space flights, man has been brought another step closer to the moon. Aboard these manned Apollo flights, three astronauts, and with them, Tang, the energy breakfast drink. That commercial played all throughout my life. So I'm gonna go mix me up some Tang, and I'll be right back, and we're gonna talk about Mary Jackson. Ooh. It's been a long time since I've had Tang. <laughs> now there's something about Mary. Not that one. Mary Jackson. This one. Mary Jackson was born April 9th, 1921 in Hampton, Virginia, where she went to high school and graduated with the highest honors you can get. After graduating high school, she then goes to Hampton University, where she gets not one, but two degrees. She got a bachelor's in mathematics and she got a bachelor's in physical science. After she graduated from college, though, she tried to go get a job. And because schools were still segregated at the time, which it's still baffles my mind that that was a thing, but it was. So schools are still segregated at this time. And so she goes and she starts teaching mathematics at the local school for black kids. She only taught that for about a year, but she also tutored high school students in college, which by the way, she continued doing all throughout her career. But in the 40s, she moved back home to Hampton, Virginia, where she got a job as a bookkeeper, a receptionist. And I got to tell you, I'm a, this is my two cents here. There's not a chance in hell that a dude, let alone a white dude, would have a bachelor's in mathematics and a bachelor's in science and get a job as a bookkeeper or receptionist. There's literally nothing wrong with either one of those jobs. Nothing. They are great jobs. But if your love is mathematics and science, you're not going out to get a job as a bookkeeper and you're not going out to get a job as a receptionist. But anyway, I digress. Finally, in 1951, she is recruited to become a clerk at NACA, uh, National Advisor advisory committee for aerodynamics. It later became NASA. So she gets this clerk job at NASA. Now she worked in what was called the computer pool. Computers, not like what we're used to today, computers. When they would say you were a computer, that was your job title. You were a computer. And she was a computer in this pool of other women. Now keep in mind their area was segregated. They had their own area that they sat in. And even when they would go to the cafeteria, they had to place their order with the cafeteria worker, get their food, and then they'd have to skedaddle back to their desk to eat because they weren't allowed to eat in the cafeteria. They also weren't even able to use the same bathroom facility. So uh, you can imagine you're working on a space program, mathematics, science, this is going wrong, that's going wrong, whatever. I would imagine that's a very stressful job for anybody who's doing it. But now take that job and add on to it every day having to walk in and realizing that you are treated less than other people that are doing the same job. And in fact, really the only reason that women were computers to begin with was because computers came about during World War One, and during World War One, the dudes were off fighting and so women stepped up plate and they, start, they became computers. That started dying down a little bit. Women went back to the home. World War Two starts. What happens? Guys go off to war. Women step up to the played again. But as soon as, as the men come home, even though these women have been doing a great job, they're okay. Now go back to the kitchen, go back to the home. 
man. Give me a break. Sorry, little outburst. Anyway, so Mary, Mary's ticked off, right? Cause she's goes to this other division and one day she's out. She can't find the women's restroom, excuse me. She can't find the black women's restroom. And she asked these white, white women, hey, where's my restroom? And they just laugh at her because as she said, she's like, how would they know where my restroom is? So she's super frustrated. Well, she happens to run into this dude by the name of Casimir Zernecki. Thankfully he goes by Kaz. So I'll be able to pronounce it because I'm horrible at pronouncing names, which is why I call Laura, 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 babe all the time. Anyway, so she runs into Kaz and they start talking and things like that and venting about the day and she's ticked. She's so ticked she's ready to quit. Well, Kaz says, hey man, why don't you come work for me? So she does. So she goes to work with Cass. And what they're doing is they're developing this wind tunnel so that they can see what rocket ships or what materials or whatever will sustain the wind velocity that they're getting while being launched up to space. So that's what she's doing. So Kaz in the 60s says, you know, I'd really like to promote you to an engineer, but you've got to take these classes before I can do that. She finds out that there's a local high school that teaches those classes she needs at night. The problem is that while Brown versus Board of Education had passed four years prior, this place was a little behind the times and so their schools were still segregated. And the high school where they taught these classes was a whites only high school. So did that detour Mary? Hell no, it did not. So she goes to the board and she petitions to say, look, you know, this is the only place I can take these classes. I need these classes so that I can get this, this promotion at work. Can I please take these classes? She then actually gets a permit to go to this school. All right, so she graduates, she gets her degree, and she is promoted to engineer. Now, between the time she graduated and the late 70s, she's working right alongside with Kaz, and they're doing some pretty cool stuff. Well, 1977 comes around, and Kaz decides it's time for him to retire. And Mary takes a look and says, you know, Kaz is retiring. I wonder what's going on out there. So she starts kind of looking around. Now, she had reached the peak of her career as a woman, she could go no higher. That's it. There was a cap or a ceiling on how far a woman could go in the engineering department, in the engineering industry, really. So she finds out about this job, Federal Women's Program Manager is available and it's a demotion. So she really thinks about it long and hard and she decides, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and take it. So she took more classes so she could become an equal opportunity specialist and an affirmative action program specialist. So what she did was she literally took a demotion so that she could help other women and minorities reach for the stars. Remember, she was at NASA. So when I say reach for the stars, I mean that literally. So Mary finally retires in 1985 from NASA and she kept herself busy tutoring. She had some grandkids, so she was playing with them and she was just kind of relishing and being a bad bitch. But then on February 11th, 2005, Mary passed away peacefully at the age of 83. Now, of course, her legacy continued and her story got out there along with her colleagues, Katherine Johnson and Dorothy Vaughn in the movie, Hidden Figures, where Janelle Monet played Mary. In 2018, it was announced there's a school in Salt Lake City, Jackson Elementary School, and it was named after President Jackson, and well, we know what a that guy was. And so it was time to change the name, right? I mean, look, it's part of our history. We had great people in our history, and we had in our history, and if we just uh, call out those that are then maybe we won't relive it, right? Anyway, so they decide, hey, let's get rid of the name Andrew Jackson School, and instead they may named it Mary Jackson Elementary School, which was kind of convenient, but still. Then in 2020, NASA changed their name from DC NASA Headquarters to the Mary W. Jackson NASA Headquarters. Now, I can't help but wonder if maybe because there was an award-winning movie that depicted Mary Jackson as one of the main characters in there, if that that's what made people finally go, hmm, maybe we ought to honor, you know, these women. I don't know. What my hope is, is that we just all start learning about these women and start giving the recognition that they so much deserve. Well, look, I hope you enjoyed your tang or whatever else it was you had for lunch. And I hope you enjoyed hearing the story about Mary as much as I enjoyed researching and finding out about her. So that's it for this week. So do me a favor, like, subscribe, hit that bell so you never miss an episode and pass 
this on to whomever else you think might enjoy hearing some stories about badass women in history. So until next time, have a great weekend. Mm. Oh, I do like this tank. That's pretty good. Now I too can be an astronaut. Thanks, tank. Bye.